So next on our list is to register new users. So let's head back to VS Code and I'll just clean things up a bit in here and inside our application inside our user folder let's create another new class and this one we'll simply call register and this is going to be a command handler because we are changing the state of our application here when we register a new user so let's use the C handler or Chandler snippet for this and let's just go ahead and bring in everything we need so we need mediator and we need persistence and we need system.threading.tasks and system.threading and also system and let's just reformat this as well now in almost all circumstances we'll never return anything from our commands however there's always an exception and what we want to do when we register a user is also technically sign them in at the same time. Now it's not compulsory to do this, we could keep our registration completely separate from our login and we could allow users to register and then make them log in straight away afterwards. But just to keep things nice and simple, for our users I'm going to return a user object from our registration. Now typically we don't want to do this in commands, they should be they should never return anything in normal circumstances. But don't forget this is a pattern. It's not a set of laws. It's not a rule book. And like any pattern, it's helpful to take a pragmatic approach to it to suit the purposes of your specific application. So on this particular occasion, I'm going to return a user object from our command. And what we're going to use inside our request object is we're going to need the user to provide a display name so I'll say display name here and then we'll specify a string of username as well and then I'll specify a string of email and also we need the password that the user wants to use for their accounts and what we'll need to do is validate these properties as well so we'll need to add another class inside here, public class and command validator. And this is going to be an abstract validator. And we'll pass in the command. And then we'll create, well, we'll first of all bring in fluent validation. And then we'll create a constructor and inside here we'll specify our rules and we'll just make sure all of these are not empty so I'll say x goes to x dot display name and I'll just specify not empty and then I'll just copy that this down three more times and specify username and email and also the password and then we just need to add the logic for our handler and what we need here in order to create a user we need to use the user manager and we also need our JWT generator so that we can return the token with the registration request so I'll add the user manager and we need to specify the app user as the type and call it user manager and we also want the IJWT generator and call it JWT generator and we'll also need to bring in ASP.NET Core identity and also domain and also our application interfaces and let's go ahead and also create the fields from parameter so we'll need the user manager and the JWT generator and as per usual I'll just remove this dot from these as well and inside our handler logic here what we want to do is first of all we want to make sure that a user cannot create a user with an email or a username that's been used before and what we'll do is we'll just add a couple of checks first of all and then we'll say if await 
context.users.where and we'll need to bring in system.link and in the expression we'll need to say where x.email is equal to request.email and then we'll just say any async and this will return a true or false if the email is already in use and if it is in use then we're going to get a true statement back so if it is in use then what we want to do is throw a new rest exception and bring in our application errors and in this case we just want to say HTTP status code and also bring in system.net and specify list as just a bad request so we're going to send a 400 response back for this and in the object errors we'll say new and then say email and in the string we'll say email already exists and we also want to do the same thing for the username so I'm just going to copy this line and paste it below and reformat and instead of email we'll specify the username is equal to the request.username and we'll just change email to username and just specify that's the username already exists. Our usernames are going to be our IDs if you like for our users inside the application. We're not going to be using the GUID ID anywhere inside our client app. We're just going to be using the usernames. So we definitely need to make sure those are unique. And if we make it past those checks then what we want to do is say var user equals a new app user and we'll set the display name equal to request dot display name the email will be request dot email and the username will be the request dot username and then what we can do is we can create our new user and because we're going to use our user manager we're not going to be saving our changes via our context so I'll specify var results in this case and we'll say await user manager dot create async and then we can pass in our user along with our request dot password and if the results is successful and we'll say result dot succeeded then instead of returning unit.value in this case what we're going to do is return a new user and we'll specify the display name equals user dot display name and the token is equal to jwt generator dot create token and we'll pass in the user and we'll say the username is equal to user dot username and finally we'll specify the image is just equal to null for now and we'll need to come back and deal with that when we're ready and it's complaining because it cannot implicitly convert application user dot user to mediator unit and that's because we haven't specified user as the return object in our handler so this needs to be a task of user and and we also need to specify the second type parameter inside our handler as well and we should have this one at the top so that should resolve that particular error and then we just need to add a semicolon and if for whatever reason this didn't work then we'll just throw a normal exception and we'll just say problem creating user so that's our register handler and what we'll do next is we'll hook this up into our user controller and then we'll go ahead and test our registration and we'll take a look at that next.